to say amen again. Amen. Let's get ready to worship the Lord. Let's praise his holy name. For the Lord is worthy and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. amen. I want everybody to be a participant. When it's time to clap our hands, let's clap our hands. Let's sing with uh, the praise team. And let's just glorify the name of the Lord on this morning. All right, praise team, come on. They're going to lead us. Try to get us started off with one of the praise songs. Say amen for the praise team. Amen. Hallelujah. Has the Lord been good to you, saints? I said, has the Lord been good to you? Truly, God is good. And we are living testimonies. We are living witnesses of his goodness, of his glory, of his uh, mercies toward us. So we just want to praise and magnify him on today. Do you know why you're here? Do you know why you have come into the house of the Lord with the people of the Lord? The song simply says, we have come into this house together in his name to worship him. Come on, stand to your feet and let's get ready for worship.
Count our blessing today, Lord. You've been so good to us. We thank you, dear Lord, for your manifold blessing. Your outreach hand of glory and mercy is what you, Lord, and that stepped in in the nick of time. And we come to thank you today, Lord. We come to praise to magnify your name because you are worthy, worthy of the praise. Oh, God, we thank you right now, Lord. Lord, bless in this place. Come in the room today, Lord. Have control. Take control today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, there's nothing like you nowhere. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this place on this morning, Lord. And you brought us here without accident or incident today, Lord. And we're thankful. We're so grateful for grateful to you today, Lord. Thank you today, Lord, for blessing all oh, for moving in this place today, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for this season that we're in today, Lord. We come to give thanksgiving and to give praise to you today, Lord. And we thank you for our family members today, Lord. And those that we have seen, Lord, and those we have not seen. Thank you, God, for just being so good to us and being so merciful. Thank you, Lord. And, and oh, God, we thank you for this season. We thank you for all of those that are under the sound of my voice. And we need a special blessing today, Lord. And sing your blessing today, Lord. Sing your words. Send words of encouragement today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, break down barriers. Break down roadblocks, Lord. Those that will come to him and your people today, Lord. And Lord, let us get a breakthrough today. A breakthrough in this place today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Sit on the revival today, Lord. Somebody need to need, just get a touch. Somebody that's need a move yes. of yours today, Lord. Yes. Move in this place, Lord, like never before. And Lord, we ask that you look on us today, Lord. Look on the sick and the afflicted today, yes. Lord. Those that are sick in their body today, Lord. Those that are listening, Lord, by, by means of, of, of Facebook, Lord. Bless them today, Lord. Those that are on Zoom and all other types of mechanism today, Lord. We ask that you bless them in a special way today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we need you today, Lord. Lord, we ask you to look on this speaker today. Bless him in a special way today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, give him strength today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, look on the first lady today, Lord. Bless her. All the auxiliaries of the church today, Lord. We need a blessing today, Lord. We need you to come in the room, Lord. Pour out your spirit on us today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the blood still works, Lord. I see your blood today. Hey, thank you, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for so many things, Lord. Lord, we humbly beseech seek you today, Lord, that you would bless us in a special way, Lord. Open your arms to us today, Lord. Help us to praise you more, Lord. Help us to be more like you today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for those that are here today, those that are in the rows today, Lord. Oh, God, those that are even on their way today, we ask a special blessing today, Lord. A special blessing upon this house and the speaker even on today, even on this evening today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your glory be revealed, and Lord, we'll give you your glory. All the praise. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Let us all say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. The Lord is good. He's worthy of the praises. Why don't you tell him thank you? Come on, everybody, tell him thank you. Come on, everybody, tell the Lord thank you. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love him? Oh, how I love Jesus. Because, because he first loved me. Come on, let's sing it Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh! 
Thanksgiving holidays. Are we really thankful? Are we really grateful for what the Lord has done? Yeah. Look like now more than ever because of what we're facing, what we're going through. That's it. We ought to be more thankful and grateful than we've ever been before. Yeah. Because I keep stating to you, and we thank God for the knowledge that God has given the doctors yeah. Yeah. to tell us to uh, put some space between each other to wear our masks. That's right. If you want to take the vaccine, you can take the vaccine. Yeah. But here's the thing. If the Lord does not keep us, we cannot be killed. Amen. 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 And I think we ought to take the advice of the medical professions. Right. But our ultimate hope and trust is not in the doctor. That's right. It is in God. Yeah. But he is the keeper. And I'm right about that. Yeah. And I thank God for his keeping power. Amen. I want to go to the word of the Lord on today, um, coming from the book of Daniel, mm. chapter 9. The book of Daniel, chapter 9. And we're going to begin reading with verse 1. With verse 1. Daniel, chapter 9, and verse 1. This is what the Lord has given to me today. And it is in my heart and my mind to be uh, brief. I told my wife this morning, on purpose, I, I have shorter notes because <laughs> I want to be a little brief uh, on this morning because I want everybody to come back and, and to certainly be here to hear uh, our guest speaker this evening. Great man of God. You all heard him many times. I certainly want you to be back this evening. But from Daniel chapter 9, verse 1, Daniel wrote these words. In the first year of Darius, the son of Hazarus, Seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. The first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, mm -hmm. that he would accomplish 70 years 
in the desolation. Desolation means really depressions. In the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. All right. And I prayed. Notice that. And what I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant up and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither had we hearkened unto to thy servants, the prophets, who spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. I want to share with you from the subject today, the prayer of Daniel. The prayer of Daniel. Sometimes I try to come up with some subjects that are eye catching that will seem to keep the attention but I didn't have one of those subjects the Lord just said the prayer of that uh, I have been commissioned and seem to challenged by God to talk to you about prayer they may have to deal with this subject for a while uh, because I'm looking at something now I'm looking at our world, I'm looking at our nation, I'm looking at what is going on. Folks, we are in more trouble than I think that we realize. Some of the experts are saying, and I was talking to one of the pastors yesterday who saw this video, some of the people are saying that we need to start stocking up on food and water. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody. I'm not saying that I don't want anybody to panic, but we really don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks. We really don't know what's going to happen in the new year. And I was talking with the pastor, my friend, and he said, look, you better go ahead and, 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 and um, stock up. And I said, I think I am going to put away some things. I think that just being wise and nothing should occur because he told me something that, that the rumor, you know, there are a lot of rumors that float. But one thing about it, if nothing occurs, then if I stocked up on some things, I just use it down the road. Are you following what I'm saying? But the, the thing is, we are in trouble, y'all. And the Lord has been dealing with me, even with this subject of late, because what the Lord is really saying is my people are not taking the time in prayer, in seeking me. It's more, listen folks, it's more than just coming to church on Sunday morning and hearing the music being played and the choir or the praise team give their selection. And, and I enjoyed them today. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. They, they, they did a wonderful job. I enjoy the musicians. I enjoy being in the praise service. But it's more than praising God and shouting and dancing. And it's more than coming to church. Listen, we have to be in the frame of mind of seeking God. Yes, yes. And how do we seek him? One of the most important things in seeking God is having a life of prayer. Well, and, and I'm not talking about that five minute prayer that you pray on your knees before you go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. We have to be prayer warriors that are praying throughout the day. Come on y'all, y'all don't say amen. amen. I'm talking about finding that secret place, that the, the, the closet, as Jesus spoke of, where it is you and God alone yes. seeking him, amen. If you go back to the days of the Bible and you look at those prophets, amen, and other individuals that seem to be mighty men and mighty women, it was because they sought the Lord. They sought him for direction. They sought him for his leading. They sought him for his righteousness. Somebody say amen. Come on, everybody say amen. When I look at Daniel chapter 9, most of the time when we teach from this particular chapter, we tend to go to verse 24. 
because from verses 24 to 27, it does have some very valuable information, information that unlocks even the mysteries of the book of Revelation because it deals with Daniel's 70 weeks. And you've heard me teach on that before in Bible class and in maybe some messages and so forth. But when I begin to read the beginning of this chapter and look at the first part where Daniel is present, oh my God. Look at what maybe we have missed even in the first portion of this chapter when it deals with this prayer. Well, and as I analyze this prayer, y'all still with me? Yes. Say amen. amen. When I look at the first part of the prayer, and even before we look at the prayer itself, let me talk about what was going on. Daniel, at this point, is, is probably around, uh, maybe around 80 years old. He's an old man now. And, uh, you know, when you go to the, the beginning of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, you find the story of Daniel and the three Hebrew boys who had recently been brought from Jerusalem, brought out of Judah. And remember, they, 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 they wanted them to eat the king's meat, drink the, kind, the, the king's wine. And, and he said, you know, Daniel, I'm about to defile myself with, with the, the, the king's meat and his wine. And he stood up. You know, for righteousness. He stood up for his conviction. Well, he was just a teenager. That's right. He may have been around 18 years old. Say amen, everybody. Right. And so, in this particular chapter, notice what he said. He had been reading. He had been reading what the prophet Jeremiah had said. Because Jeremiah, in his writings, gave the revelation that the children of Israel would be in captivity would be in Babylon for how long? 70 years. And Daniel had been counting the years. And it was close to that 70 year uh, period coming to an end. And, and he, he, he knew what Jeremiah said. And that's what Jeremiah was saying that God was going to restore his people back in Jerusalem. Say amen everybody. In other words, the, the, the people will go back home, rebuild the city, rebuild the temple. But apparently, Daniel had not seen any. Something really important. You know, we, we've been praying, y'all, these last two years, these two years, and that like 70 years. Well, we've been praying, Lord, take the pandemic. Yes. Am I right about that? Amen. How many of y'all have been praying that God Amen. healed the land? Amen. That God would give us relief. That God would restore. Yes. Amen. This country. Come on, y'all. We've been praying. And, 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 and look like that don't, that, that doesn't seem to be uh, a whole lot of an indication that this thing is going to end. Because it looks like every time things get a little bit better, we get some more bad news, don't we? Now they're looking at a new variant. Right. And they don't know what this variant is going to do exactly. You hear one opinion from one. You hear another opinion from another person. But listen. Listen. Just because we can't sense in one sense or see God's deliverance. We know that God is a deliverer. Yeah. We know that God is a healer. Y'all don't get excited. Yeah. We know that God is a way maker. If you know that that's, that's the case, lift your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Daniel is trouble here. This time ought to be coming to an end and I don't see what I want to see. So in verse 3, he, the Bible says, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by what? Prayer and what? Supplications with fasting sackcloth and ashes. Daniel was seeking the Lord with prayer. Supplications is prayer as well. Uh, supplication means I have a particular cause or I have a particular thing that I ask God for. Sometimes you say prayer. Prayer could be, you know, in prayer we thank God, don't we? Yes. We worship God in prayer. Am I right about that? But when you say supplication, means that I have something that I I have a request. I have something that I want from God. And so he said, I, 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 I sought the Lord. I'm seeking in my prayer, supplication, and fasting. 
If I would ask the question, how many of you are still fasting? Don't, don't say anything. But how many of you still fasting? Because many of us have forgotten that the founder of our church, amen, the Bishop Charles Mason, set fast days on Tuesdays and Fridays. And we kind of made it a little easy to tell y'all to go to 3 o'clock. Sometimes I know some churches, they go to 12 o'clock. They were going to 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and beyond. Amen. And we don't shorten this thing. We don't shorten the prayer. We have shortened the service. Y'all y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying here now? I don't know if y'all can feel what, what I'm trying to tell you. We don't shorten everything. We don't forget about fasting. We won't come to prayer meeting, and as a result, we don't have the anointing, we don't have the power of God, we don't see the move of God as we should. Nobody said it. Amen. But I won't say amen. amen. Can you say amen now? Amen. And, and you, 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 you got to look at this thing. You got to look at what is going on. Let me tell y'all something. God is a sovereign God. Meaning that he's all powerful, God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he can do whatever he wants to do. But I read what one preacher said this. That he has determined that certain things will take place in this world and even in our lives when there is a human response and responsibility in relation to God, to what God initiate or begin. In other words, God is waiting on you to pray. God is waiting on you to request certain things. I don't know if y'all really see what I am saying. You, you know, let me put it this way. How many of you all want to see your family members saved? Amen. Sons and daughters and grandchildren, aunts and uncles and, and neighbors and other folks that are saved. Don't y'all know it's in the will of God Amen. That every person on this earth be saved. But we understand that what? It, the individual themselves have to surrender to God. Am I right about that? Come on, y'all. Come on. Y'all say amen. amen. And, and li listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. God is waiting on, uh, waiting on you to pray to him. To pray about your children. To pray that, that he will save your lost loved one. To pray that the miracle of salvation happened in our own household. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all say amen. amen. My prayer has been, Lord, soften the hearts of people. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Soften the hearts of people. You know why I'm praying that prayer more now? As I was praying over the last few years and asking God to save this individual, save that individual, and, and seem like nothing is happening. Nothing is changing. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I, in other words, that, that he heard my prayer. But, but, but here's the point he made to me is that he's not going to save anybody against their will. Amen. He's not going to save anybody against their will, y'all. And so the Lord put it to, to my spirit to stop praying. Lord, soften the heart. Soften the heart. Lord, help them to receive your word. Lord, help them to say, yes, Lord. Come on, y'all. I've been praying and say, Lord, we need a, a miracle. Hallelujah. And most times we think about a miracle, we think about money. We think about, amen, uh, sometimes healing of our body. But I've been saying, Lord, we need a miracle. And then I make it even more precise. Say, Lord, we need a miracle of salvation. No, oh, we need a miracle. It it's a miracle when folks are saved. It's a miracle when people are delivered from sin. But God is waiting on the prayer warriors. Amen. To seek him. He's waiting on the prayer word to lay out before him. Amen. If you pray, if you pray and ask God for the anointing, it's going to take the anointing to break the yoke. Come on, y'all. And God wants to anoint you. Come on. He wants the anointing to flow in this house. But we need somebody to pray. We need somebody to seek him for the miracle. Y'all come on and say amen. Okay. Lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Come on, say, Lord, have your way. I, see, I keep being I, I keep being reminded of, of a sister that was, that was there in Jerusalem Temple, and her testimony was she thought before she came into the church she thought that she was all right she thought that she was going going to heaven but she said Elder Green in a dream 
She said, I was in a dream and, and I, I had this white dress and I was washing this dress. I kept washing, kept washing, and there was a spot in the dress. I couldn't get the spot out the dress. And she said, I heard the voice of the Lord say, take her, see. Take her. Because she's not ready. She's not right. When she came out of that dream, she called one of the television ministries and began to talk to them. And there was a prayer word. Thank God for prayer word. Oh, yeah. They prayed with her. Yeah. She went through the prayer of repentance and God saved her. Amen. She didn't know where to go. She didn't know what to do. Matter of fact, uh, Mother Jameson, she called soup, the late superintendent she and he began to talk. He prayed with her believing and gave us some advice. But then the Lord led her to come to Jerusalem Temple. And, 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 and she did wonderful as a member of the church. What I'm trying to tell you, that was a miracle. Yes. yes. God moved. God did not make her get saved. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. He didn't make her get saved. Amen. But the Lord fixed it. Amen. And put her in a position where she was in the dream. And because of that, she realized, I need to come to the Lord. Listen, say, we need to pray for a move of God. I said, we need to pray for a move of God. Hallelujah. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. If you notice the details of the model prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer, but it really wasn't like the Lord's Prayer. It's the model prayer. And you know the word, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. You know that, don't you? And, 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 and when I look at the, the model prayer there, you, you see, look at what Jesus said. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Heaven, the model prayer. You don't have to use those exact words, but the meaning ought to be there. And what it's really telling me that we, in our prayers, we should be concerned with the kingdom of God here on earth. You see, the kingdom of God right now, it is spiritual. Everybody that gets saved, amen, is in the kingdom of God. But not only should we be concerned about the kingdom of God now in its spiritual sphere, amen, we should be uh, concerned about the kingdom of God in its fulfillment of the future. God's kingdom is coming down to the earth. Thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. Thy king. That's why we have to have teachers in the book of Revelation to understand that he's going to establish his kingdom here on earth. That 1,000 years of peace. Amen. When the Lord Jesus is going to rule from Jerusalem. Say amen everybody. But not only that, look what Jesus said. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Oh my God. We ought to be concerned about the fact that God's will is need to be done here on earth. We know it's being done in heaven. Say amen everybody. But in this rebellious world, in the turmoil, in the chaos, I need to seek the Lord and ask that his will be done here on earth. I need to ask that his kingdom come. Hallelujah. You see, when we ask for God's kingdom to come, this includes asserting God's power among his people. His power to destroy the works of Satan. How many of y'all know that the works of Satan need to be destroyed? His power to heal the sick. I'm tired of just seeing people sick. I'm tired of some things that I'm going through in my physical body. I know that God is a healer. He's a miracle worker when it comes to our illnesses. Come on, y'all. And the Bible God tells us as believers that every believer can pray. Every believer can cast out devils. Come on, y'all. Every believer can pray for healing. Say amen, somebody. Come on and say amen. To heal the sick. Amen. We need this power to save the lost. Uh, to promote righteousness. Uh, we need his power, amen, to, to promote the pouring out of the Spirit of God. Uh, people need the Holy Ghost. Uh, say amen, everybody. I said people need the Holy Ghost. Uh, need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Y'all, y'all, listen to me. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. We don't lost our desire, amen, to seek for the Holy Ghost. Uh, we don't lost our desire to spend time at the altar. And I understand in the time of the pandemic, we can't be jam-packed 
like we've been before. Amen. But even before the pandemic uh, hit us, look like nobody wants to come to the altar. Y'all, come on, y'all. Stay with me here. Do y'all know that the altar is a place of death? In Old Testament days, what did they do at the altar? They cut the, the throat of the goat, spilled the blood. Amen. The goat or the lamb died in the place of the sinner. Well, I want y'all to know the altar is still a place of death. Oh, when you come to the altar, you come here that you die. I say that you die. Your feelings die. Your, listen, your ideals die. Your attitude dies. Amen. Everything that will go against God dies. I know you're saved. I know the Lord brought you out of the world of sin. But listen, there's still a war going on. Uh, you, 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 your greatest enemy is self. Come on, y'all. I say your greatest enemy is self. Self wants to have charge. Self wants to do what self wants. Come on, y'all. Self wants things that, that God say you don't need. Come on, y'all. Y'all say amen. Self wants to stay at home and do a church time. Self does not want to go to prayer. Hallelujah. Self got to die. Come on, y'all. I say self got to die. At the altar. Hallelujah. Something has got to die. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Come on here and say, Lord, have your way. Clap your hand and give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, in, in this chapter, oh, I won't have time to go through all the scriptures. I want y'all to read this chapter, especially the first 16 verses of more. But Jeremiah, in this chapter, he was an intercessor. Amen. And listen, we as the saints of God, we need to do the same today. We need to be intercessors. What is an intercessor? An intercessor is a person who is a believer. Amen. It is that person that prays and pleads with God on the behalf of others who desperately need God's intervention. It takes some work to be an intercessor. It's going to take what, what Daddy did. Daniel has said that he was seeking God through what? Prayer, supplication, and fasting. Listen, if we want things to change in this world, somebody's got to intercede. Somebody has got to be an intercessor. Come on, y'all. Come, y'all say amen. amen. Things are bad in America. Things are bad in this world. God is waiting on somebody to be an intercessor. Do y'all remember Moses? When God, uh, in, in essence, said he was going to destroy the children of Israel, he was going to take them out, Moses interceded. Moses told him in so many words that if you're going to destroy them, take my life. Yes, he did. Or take my name, brother, out of the book of life. Out of the book of life. And, and God told him, I said, wait a minute. He said, I want you to know, I blot out who, I want to blot yes, out yes. of the book of life. I thought about that thing. Things were bad, y'all, yes. for Israel. Things were really bad. When God talk, talked about wiping out a whole nation, there were about three million folks that were there. He was just going to wipe them out and start a new nation on the boat. But Moses interceded. If, if Moses could intercede for a whole nation, what about the saints today? What about you folks that got the Holy Ghost? What about you folks that are saved? What are we doing? Are we in a seed for anybody? Are we asking the Lord to save folks? Are we asking the Lord to change America? Are you, are you asking the Lord to touch these folks in, in Washington, D.C.? Amen. The, the president and the vice president, the Supreme Court. Listen, these court cases that have been all on the news, Elder. I, I was praying to the Lord about the court case. Because that, that second case out there in Georgia, I had my mind. They find these folks innocent, and they already found that boy up there in what was it, Wisconsin. Yes, found him innocent. They find these, these three men innocent. I don't know what these folks going to do. And don't tell them what kind of rise going to break. And I would talk to them, Lord, let justice be done. Fix this situation, Lord. Now fix it, Lord, because we don't want to see any more killers. We don't want to see it rise and, 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 and all this stuff that's going on. Somebody has got to pray. Somebody, somebody's got to talk to the Lord. And it'll a seed for this nation. Lift your hand against it. Have your way, Lord. Come on and set it. Have your way, Lord. I, I, I'm not going to be much longer. I, I know this is not the most exciting message. It, it, it's not one that's going to make us shout as so much today. But it is the word of the Lord. Because I, I want y'all to look at what else is in this chapter. Uh, we read, and, and you may have closed your Bible. Uh, but verse 4, Daniel said that, he said, and I pray Unto the Lord my God and may 
made confession. Then in verse 5 he said, we have sinned. And have committed iniquity. Iniquity is another word for sin. It's really talking about perversion. And have done wickedly. And have rebelled. Even by departing from thy precepts. And from thy judgment. When I read those two verses. The Lord reminded me. That Daniel was not talking about the Babylonians. He was not talking about the pagans. The folks on the street. But Daniel said. That Daniel was repenting. For God's people. The, the Israelites, amen, the people of Judah, they were God's people that had gone into idolatry, amen, worshiping false gods, amen, who had sacrificed their babies in the fire, alive, amen. The uh, folks had done all kind of perverted things. They were into adultery and fornication, but they had gone into homosexuality, lesbianism, and that's the reality. In other words, they were having a relationship with animals. Things had gotten so terrible. And that's why God allowed them to be exiled, to go into captivity. He was, so Daniel was praying. He was praying about himself and his own people. Hallelujah. He was confessing. And when I read that, I began to look at us. I begin to look at the church. I begin to look at living of the valley. Do we have idols of the heart today? I preached about idols of the heart a few years ago. Come on, y'all, say amen. It's not that we have stone gods in our homes, but anything you put before the Lord is an idol. Your spouse can be an idol. Your children can be an idol. The beautiful car you drive can be an idol. Do we have idols of the heart? Come on, y'all. Are we sacrificing our children? Y'all got to look at this now. Are we, sac we can sacrifice them in different means and different methods, but I, I, I'm, I'm disturbed by folks, amen, even of the church world who no longer believe that abortions are wrong. I want you to know abortion is the killing of an innocent baby. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. But some people are accepting it. So listen, this thing that I'm dealing with now is individual. I'm asking everybody here, take a look at your own life. Are you living a life that's pleasing God? Are we fully committed? Have we really made God number one in our lives? It's not so much of us getting up in testimony and serving and telling the folk that God is number one in our lives. But listen, God is looking at your life. God is taking notice of how you deal with him. Uh, do you have the time to commune with him? Do you have the time in prayer? Come on, y'all. Do you have the time in reading your Bible? You know, when, 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 when somebody is special to you, somebody is number one in your life, you're going to see to that person. You want to be around that person. Say amen, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And come on and say amen. amen. You, you married folks in here. You're married. Amen. You, you, you want to declare that, that the spouse is number one in your life in that relation. Am I right about that? That nobody come before your spouse. All right. Am I right about that? Uh -huh. Say amen. amen. Come on. It's, God is looking for the same. I've got to be number one. I got to be Lord of your life. And what I'm finding, listen to me carefully, what I'm finding today that people want today, they want him as a savior, but they don't want him to be Lord. Uh-oh. What do you mean by that? Nobody wants to go to hell. People will come to the altar and say, Lord, forgive me. But after he forgives you, he has to become number one in your life. He's got to be Lord of all in your life. In other words, you got to follow him with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Come on and say amen. amen. You got to love him, amen, with all that you got. When you really love a person, you'll go the last mile. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. You'll do pain that maybe you wouldn't do for nobody else. Amen. But because you love, I love Sister Ryan. There's some things that I'm just going to do for her because she's my wife. She's the love of my life. Are y'all following what I'm saying? I go the extra mile for her. Y'all come on. Y'all come on here. And, and listen, this is what God is looking for you in your relationship to him. But Daniel understood that had not been the case for Israel. So he, he, he said, Lord, forgive us. In verse 6, look what he said. He said, neither. 
have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our priests, our, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Daniel said, you sent us prophets. You sent us Isaiah. You sent us Jeremiah. You sent us Micah, amen, and Zephaniah, and Zachariah. All these were, you sent them to them, but we didn't hearken to them. We did not listen to them. And listen, God got a word for you today. He's got a word for you today. He's got a word to warn you. There's a word of knowledge. There's a word of wisdom. But I want to know how we hearken it. Are we listen to God's word? Amen. Are we applying God's word? Hallelujah. God has a preacher coming tonight. Amen. I have confidence in the events of Jeremiah Peter. Every time I've heard, he's had a word from the Lord. Yes. Amen. As pastor, I'm going to encourage the folk to come to church. But somebody going to say, oh, no, can't go out at night. Oh, no. I, you know, I got to do this. I got to do that. I don't know how many folk going to come out there. I don't know what's going to happen. I, but I'm telling you, as your prophet, there's a blessing that's in this house. Man. I say there's a blessing that's in this house. Man. There's a blessing just for you. Man. Can you say amen? amen? But they did not hearken to the, the, the word of the Lord. They would not hear what God said. And because they did not hear what God said, God let them go into captivity. Let them be taken out of the land. Many of them were killed. Another were taken uh, into captivity. And I want to know today, will we do the same that Israel did? I'm, I'm going to be closed in just a few minutes. I'm watching the clock. Eight minutes I preach. But will we go down the same path? Will we be cut off from God's promised land today? What's God's promised land? You know, he still got a promised land. A land that flowed with milk and honey. Hallelujah. In other words, all of the promises of God are for the believer. Yes. All the promises of God are yes, yes to the believer. God got a blessing for you. But then, but listen, listen, when you don't do what God wants you to do, you can be cut off from the promised land like, the, like God's people were back then. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. Come on. And you got to understand, you see, we've been singing songs about crossing over Jordan and Going into the promised land, the land of Canaan, and many of those songs really relate or make you think about heaven. The promised land is not heaven because over the promised land, they still had to fight giant. Goliath was over there in the promised land. The Amorites and the Jebusites and all that were in the promised land. But here's the thing about the promised land. Amen. It doesn't matter that the giants are in the promised land because I'm God's child. You know what the Lord will do for you? Because I am his child, the Lord will place in my spirit for me to go get a rock, and then he'll show me how to use a slave. I don't know if y'all got it, but look, look at what happened. David was in the promised land. Goliath was doing all that bad talk about what he was going to do, what he was going to do to Israel. And then he, he, he looked at David, and it doesn't say, you, you are nothing. I'm going to tear you apart with my bare hand. But look at David. David had five smooth stones and had a sling to throw the rock. God will show you where the rock is and show you how to use your sling. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. So listen, he said you have the spies. I'm getting ready to close it. He said you have the spies, or, or that is, that we have not hearkened to God's word. And I really want to go further, but I'm getting ready to close this message. Because as I looked at that last verse I read, I, I began to look at what the Lord said uh, over in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 36 and verse 16. It said, but they mock, and this is before the exile, before they went to captivity. Say, but they mock the messengers of God and despise his words and misuse his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no Remedy. I don't want Lily the Valley ever get to the point where it is said by the Spirit of God that there is no remedy. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. That there is no healing. Yes. That there is no deliverance. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying here? This is where Israel got. And this is why he let them go into captivity. And listen, not everybody was unrighteous because we know Daniel was righteous. The three Hebrew boys, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, there were others. But the good suffer with the bad. Yes. I've been talking to God about living in the valley lately. 
Oh, I've been, I've been having some conversation. That's the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about. That, that's some, that's some things that, 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 that has touched my heart. I said, Lord, if I feel like this, I know you got to feel like this. Uh, Lord, what's going on? We, we need help, Lord. We, 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 we really need revival. We, 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 we need a refreshing, you know. Uh, we need help, Lord. We, we, we really need help, y'all. And the Lord keeps saying, it's time to go to base. It's time to go back to prayer. It's time to go back to seeking him. To ask him for God's divine presence in our lives. And so as I get ready to come to a close, and, 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 and I look at the other verses that I'm not going to have time to read. But in one particular verse, in verse 11 of Daniel chapter 9, it says, yea, and this is, this is still Daniel praying, y'all. He said, yea, all Israel have transgressed the law, even by departing, the that they might not obey thy voice. Listen to what Daniel said. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Yes. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. He said the curse is poured upon us. I did a reference to that scripture. And if you go back to Leviticus chapter 26, which I may do in another teaching. The, in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14, said, But if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and he goes on to say, uh, if you despise my statutes, my laws. And he, he speaks of another thing. When you get to verse 16, he talks about what he's going to do. Now listen, verse 14 that I read, he said, but if you're not hearken to me, a lot of times we bypass that scripture. But we love, in that same chapter, we love verse 8. Because in verse 8 it said, and five of you should chase a hundred. Yes. And a hundred of you should put 10,000 to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Y'all heard that scripture. Yes. But, but we bypass the other verses in the middle of chapter 26. Look what the Lord said. I'm getting ready to close here. He said, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. God said, I will appoint over you terror. Listen to what he said. Not only terror, but he said consumption and the burning of Ah, A G U E. I looked that word up, and guess what? Ah is the word ah is an illness involving fever. Did y'all hear what I said? It is the disease that involves fever, and God said, I will appoint that to you. Yes. Now we got COVID 19 and all these variants that cause what? Fever. fever. Along with COVID-19, some people get new boy. They got a what? It's in the word of God. It's in the word of God. I'm closing. This message was done for you to think. To encourage you. To stimulate you. To look at what am I doing? Am I seeking God? Am I seeking Him with my whole heart? And I seek it with my soul. What am I doing? Folks, I am convinced, and you may not agree with me, but I am convinced that if the church world was doing better, <coughs> I believe God would end this plague a little faster. I really do. I believe God is waiting on the church. I really do. There's a message in all that's going on. Yes, when this pandemic broke out, I told the Lord, Lord, I want to learn every lesson I'm supposed to learn from. Mm -hmm. Now, do I want to go through this? No. But God knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. Sometimes I don't understand what he does. But he knows. Lord, I want to learn everything I want that I'm yes, supposed to learn. Does. Because in the end, I want to hear the Lord say, well done, oh, yeah. thou good and faithful so We need to know that in all that we have, that we think we have in this life, it means nothing on the other side. It means nothing when you have breathed your last breath and have closed your eyes. Folks, we need to be preparing for the future. 
And I'm not talking about future and saving the account and stocking that up goods that I talked about, but I'm talking about what, what's going to happen on the other side. What's going to happen after you die? You've got to face God in the judgment. You want to stand before the Lord. And you want to hear him say, well done. You don't want to hear him say, depart from me. You don't want him to tell you, I never knew you. Come on, y'all. But you want to go to, you want to be in heaven with the Lord. You want to enjoy what God has in store. Do you know God has blessings on the other side? Blessings so much. When Paul went into heaven, he came back, he said, that's the thing I can't even talk about. I can't even tell you about it. It's so wonderful up there. One preacher said he put it in, his, in this interpretation. He said if Paul could have had a toes of folk, they'd have been in too much of a hurry to get up there. It's a wonderful place. But heaven is a prepared place for prepared people to stand with me. Let me yes, come to the end. Play on the view with you. It's time to let you go. It's time to go home. Hallelujah. Play the music book. Lord, I thank you. Why don't everybody tell it thank you? Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody tell it thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're going to have prayer. We're going to have prayer. We're going to talk to the Lord just for a few minutes and we're going home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has really placed them on my heart for us to do a prayer of repentance. It's all right to tell God that we're sorry. Because every one of us could have done better. Perhaps some of us have become slowful, unfaithful, and it could be that we've even sinned against God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That we've done something that, that we've transgressed the word of the Lord. The one thing about God, he's a God with no chance. I plan on preaching that in the future. He's a God of another chance. He wants to give you, whether you're in this sanctuary or whether you are, are listening about web, Facebook, and Zoom, he's a God of other chance. And if you have done something that is a sin against his word, you know it. You, I'm just going with God. I'm just telling you what God's telling me. And you feel shame. You feel guilty. God has said, come on back. Come on back home. I'll take you back. I'll accept the gift if you just repent of your way. He's willing to do it. He, didn't, he doesn't have to do it, y'all. I told you, he wanted to destroy a whole nation. He feels the same way about sin today as he felt back then. But thank God for his mercies. Hallelujah. I say thank God for his mercies. Now, one of the reasons he wanted to go and destroy them, they kept rebelling over and over and over and over and God got tired. Yes, yes. Is God tired with us today? Is he tired with the way we do his business? Is he tired and not pleased with the way we're acting? Can we pray, you all? Can we pray? Dear God, we thank you. Tell him thank you. We thank you now, God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you, God, for being alive. We don't really deserve it, God. We hadn't been so good, oh God, that we really deserve your blessings. But God, we come here and we are grateful to you for all that you've done. You sent your son into this world and he gave his life. He didn't have to do it, Lord, but he did it because he loved us. God, I want to thank you for this wonderful gift of salvation. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. But Lord, as we look at this message and we examine our lives, Lord, we lift our hands now. Lift your hands. And oh God, we lift our hands to surrender to you. Lord, I surrender all. Come on, tell him, Lord, I surrender all. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. For the way I've acted. I'm sorry Lord. For the things I've done. Forgive me now. Come on you need to beat it in your heart. Forgive me Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my transgressions. Wash me again. Wash me Lord. 
Wash me all over, Lord. Touch my mind. Touch my heart. Oh, Lord, I need a touch from you. I need your help. Help me, Lord. I want to live right. Help me, Lord. I want to grow in you, Lord. Help me, Lord. I want to draw closer to you. Touch me, Lord. Come on, be it from the heart. We're going to just pray for a few minutes. Come on, take a touch me. I need a touch, God. I need a touch, Lord. I need a touch, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Feel me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, feel me, Lord. I need your presence. I need your spirit. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Now tell him, yes, Lord. Tell him, yes, Lord. Out of your soul, tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll obey you. Yes, Lord. I surrender all to you. Yes, Lord. With your help, I'm going to do better. Come on, tell him, yes, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Come on, everybody. Tell him, have your way. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. I'm surrendering to you, Lord. I'm surrendering to you, Lord. Move in me. Oh, Jesus. Move in my heart. Move in my soul. Move with me. Rain on me tonight. Rain on me today, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Tell the Lord thank you. Come on, everybody. Tell him thank you. Come on, everybody. Tell him thank you. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. We praise you now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In all things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand of praise. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. The announcer, if you're come to give the announcements. And uh, if you have an offering, we certainly want you to prepare to give. As soon as she finished the announcement, they will come with the offering bowl and receive it. The offering for today. Say amen, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right, it's revival time. This evening at 5.30 p.m., we will be in revival. Come in and be blessed of the Lord. You can't afford to miss it. The evangelist Jeremiah Penrow of Tupelo, Mississippi, will be the guest speaker. Tuesday night, we have our regular uh, youth Bible study at 5.30. Wednesday night, 5.30, we have prayer, followed by Bible study. Any members on Medicare or know someone who is and needs help signing up for free extra benefits, such as dental and vision at no cost, please see Sister Knight Jones. The deadline is December 7th. On the prayer list, we have Eula Foster, Miles Edwards, Ann Williams, Martha Moore, and Vera Johnson. Thank you. All right, let's say amen. amen. And I hope that you paid attention to the announcements Certainly, everybody, everybody that's here, please, 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 do not stay at home unexpectedly. Uh, some of the people who have been coming on Sundays who are not here today to come this evening, we probably want to just do one service. Let's come back. Listen, I want to start on time. That means that in order to start on time, we have to be here before 5.30. Let's try to get here at 5.15. Our speaker is uh, perhaps... Get ready to get on the highway now to come our way. We, come on, you all receive the offering as a, as a finish. Come on, come on while, while I'm finishing up. He may be on the highway or get ready to get on the highway. He's coming all over from Tupelo. Don't let him come and we're not here. Amen? Don't let me down as pastor. But more importantly, don't let God down. This revival is ordained of God. And there's a blessing. Y'all heard what I said earlier today? There's a blessing in this house. Amen? amen. Say amen, everybody. All right. Uh, they're just about finished. We're going to have you stand in just a moment. Listen, also, let me say this. Notice there's a little change in the order of services. We 
since we're going to be in revival tonight, I decided we wouldn't do the three nights. We do youth Bible study. But on Wednesday night, because I just talked about prayer, so we don't need to counsel prayer. We need to be in prayer because we're in revival. Because the next, the second night, the next Sunday night. So we're going to have the prayer, and then we'll do Bible study right here in church. That's what we did week before that. And the people enjoyed that we had prayer, and we went right to Bible study. And we were not here long. We were not here all night. We had a, a nice time. So we're going to do the same this Wednesday. So glad to see our friend, Sister Pepper. Amen. Bless you. We, you may not know, but we started a little bit early now because of uh, this pandemic situation. So we, we, we started a little early. I'm glad to see you. So glad to see you. I was thinking about you the other week. I hadn't seen you in a while. But we're certainly glad to see you today. All right, we're standing together. Go home and refresh yourselves. Get you a meal. Take a brief nap. And come on back to service this evening. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for all that you have done, all we've heard and seen today. We thank you for your people that have come. I pray, God, that you will continue to bless, that you continue to keep us. Lord, take us to our homes safe and sound. Bless the evangelist that is on the way. Give them safe passage here. We pray, God, for your blessings and your approval. You already have given the approval. We pray for your blessings on the revival service tonight. We come, Lord, expected to meet you. Bless your people, O oh God. Bless the offering that's been received, every person that is given, and every person that had the desire to give. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, God bless you.